Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today we are very happy to have the Volkswagen Golf Life Plus with us on review. And this is the Cat A friendly version of its uh, of the previous version. So for those of you who know, the previous version was actually a Cat B car and it was a 1.5 litre uh, mild hybrid. And this car utilize, utilizes the same power unit, but it has been spec'd to become Cat A friendly. So for today's review, I think the primary objective would be to see whether or not there are any differences um, and uh, how this car fits into um, life in Singapore and its, and its urban environments. And truth be told, this is, actually, this is actually not the first time I'm driving this car and uh, this, interest, this review is interesting for me because we actually just came back from a two-day, one-night uh, overseas press drive uh, to Malaysia, to the Zaru specifically. And uh, what we did was we took a bunch of uh, Volkswagen and Skoda Cat A cars and we took them on Malaysia's B roads and saw and, and we got to experience um, how dynamic they were to drive despite being Cat A cars because I think the assumption is that Cat A cars tend to be maybe a little bit more basic and a little bit more uh, simple. Uh, but the truth is, um, these cars actually kind of punch above their weight and they pack a lot of value. So, um, so actually I've already put this car through its paces and we were, um, and this car was going at speeds that we cannot mention on camera but uh, uh, nonetheless we're going to go ahead with this review because we want to show you a little bit more uh, of an in-depth look at uh, what the car has to offer. Um, so we're going to start off by talking a little bit about the exterior and then we're going to go uh, check out the car's interior and then after that I'm going to take you for a drive. Alright, let's go. Alright guys, so here is the exterior of the Golf Life Plus and I'll quickly take you around the car. So this is the 8th generation of the Golf, uh, which means this falls under the Mark 8 generation. And um, the Golf, I think, has always been associated with a more contemporary audience. And um, I think this kind of shows in the exterior design of the car as well because uh, what you get on the Life Plus is actually these uh, black towel uh, window trims, as you can see, uh, which I think looks a bit, a, a bit more contemporary because I think that's kind of the trend nowadays. But at the same time, the car does retain some premium looking bits. Uh, there is still chrome on the front and on the back and I'll show you the back in a little bit as well, uh, which does help to bring the whole package together quite nicely. Um, the car comes with 18-inch uh, wheels as standard, so without doing much aesthetic upgrades, you already have a car that actually looks quite sporty. Here is the rear. So the Mark 8 generation itself has been around for a little bit of time, um, but of course since its introduction until now, the Mark 8 has seen some different trim levels on the car. Um, this Life Plus is of course, uh, uh, it hasn't been around since the very beginning but uh, like I said, you know, this is the Cat A friendly version and what you get is this Life Plus trim. There is no R trim on this currently, I believe. So this is the highest trim level that you can get at the moment. Um, but of course, uh, despite the, the differences, the, the overall architecture and the overall shape still remains the same. The car does feel like the same contemporary car and uh, you wouldn't be able to tell the trim uh, levels apart unless you park the car side by side and really observe the differences. So yes, I think it's a pretty handsome car but then again, uh, I do have a little bit of soft, soft spots for these cars because uh, I used to own two MK6s back when I was younger. Uh, so it's always nice coming back to a golf and uh, reviewing a golf. But anyway, I digress. Uh, let me show you the inside of the car and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so now we are seated on the inside of the Volkswagen Golf and uh, as you can see, the Mark 8 has been designed to look pretty sleek, pretty clean and uh, I think the first thing you notice <coughs> is the fact that there are no uh, independent air conditioning controls. So what happens here is that uh, you, to activate the climate control, you actually press the climate button and then the climate control settings come up. Um, this is all pretty neat and good and I think as far as integrated air conditioning controls go, this is not the most complicated or difficult to use. But the fan speed is controlled with a sort of a touch control which 
I think it's a little bit hard to control while driving, but I think all that's not so relevant. Uh, at the end of the day, um, I think people will get used to these sort of things. Um, in front of me, there is a digital driver's display. So this is fully digital. And um, what you actually get is like three separate dials. So you can actually customize these dials. You can change um, what you are looking at on the um, individual dials. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so of course you've got things like your audio, every speed, economy, a whole bunch of different settings that you can customize to your preference. So it depends on the type of things you want to see while you're driving, yeah? Everything temp. Yeah. So pretty useful. Um, here is the golf steering wheel. It kind of feels like a flat bottom steering wheel. Uh, in, in, in fact, it really kind of does. Uh, although this is not like an R-line spec or anything, but it does feel like a flat bottom steering wheel, which is pretty nice. The interior of this car, um, so the center console, sorry, uh, is actually uh, mainly just your drive control. So you've got uh, this little slot here for your mobile phone, which I, I know you can't really see. Uh, a bit of trade-off because of the camera angle. Um, and uh, you do get a drive-by-wire system, a shifter here. Just a little bit of a nubbin that you can shift. So you just shift, you know, press a, uh, press the brakes, put it in drive, park it through a button here. You've got a handbrake here, an electronic handbrake. Uh, which I think is uh, not particularly important anymore because if you put your car in drive, it typically automatically does that for you. Um, okay, so there is a wireless charger here for those of you, of you who are interested or those of you who like to charge your phones. And uh, there are also two USB-Cs here which are important because this car comes with wireless charging but if you want CarPlay and Android Auto, you will have to attach the phone to the USB-C inputs. So in a way, if you think about it, um, actually you don't really need the wireless charging pad because most likely you're just going to be attaching your phone to the cable or via the cables anyway. Um, one thing that Volkswagen have always done very very well and have continued to do so is the fact that all the storage inserts are actually lined. Which means you don't get you know, any rattly sounds when you put any hard objects inside. So I think that's a really thoughtful piece um, of engineering, if you will, uh, that they have included. Uh, that's very nice because you, you look at this, so what I'm going to do now, I'm not sure I'm allowed to do this, but... This rubber piece actually comes from the insert right here. Um, they could have just made it hard plastic like most other manufacturers do but no, they didn't. They actually lined it with rubber. The wireless charging pad is lined with rubber. And these are all removable so you can actually wash it, you know. And as you know, rubber in a car, especially in humid conditions in Singapore, you know, if they get dirty, it's not so simple as just taking a cloth to wipe it down because uh, some of the things might stick. So it's really nice that it's removable and you can wash them. And, and, and this actually um, is true with, let me check, uh, okay, so yeah, these are removable as well, the ones in the middle and, and your cup holders, look, that's pretty awesome, and there are a lot of smart little features as well, so this cup holder here, you can actually remove the entire, or you can actually sort of uh, sheath the housing, so that you get a more open storage area for larger items <coughs> or if you have a cup you just need to press a button and then the housing does come out to, to kind of uh, caress your cup um, uh, and then you can also adjust the size uh, so it's basically variable so it really doesn't matter what sort of uh, um, what the size of your tumbler is it will fit very nicely inside the golf while I have the car key, I'll show it to you here as well. It looks very nice. It's very pretty. Yes. So I think all around the golf, it feels like simplicity is key. Um, there's not too many things that you need to, to to worry about in this car. A lot of things are very clean cut. Uh, of course, you know, being a Volkswagen, this is not the most uh, uh, 
elaborately adorned cabin, but their cars have always been built off a principle of functionality, sensibility, practicality, and um, build quality as well. So believe it or not, and most people don't believe me when I say this, but Volkswagen's build quality is right up there with the best. And this is not to be confused with um, um, how how extravagantly built the, the cabin is. You can use uh, simple materials but built very well and I think that's what you get in the Golf because in this centre console it's built pretty solid. Um, not quite as solid as an Audi probably but um, almost there, right, right almost there. Almost on par with Mercedes Benz actually. Uh, and once again don't flame me uh, please because I'm not talking about how pretty the, the cabin looks, I'm talking about built quality. How well everything is put together. And this car is very well put together. Okay, so um, so yeah, I am very happy in this car, and um, I think what we have left is to jump in the back. Probably, let's jump in the back, and then uh, we'll take the car for a drive after that. All right, so now I've jumped into the back of the car, back of the Golf, and. This seat, the driver's seat, is in my regular driving position and I am 175 meters tall and I am behind the driver's seat right now and this is the amount of legroom that I have. So it's actually a pretty healthy amount and um, not just a healthy amount but a very usable amount. Um, I remember in my Mark 6 Golf, I used to have a problem with rearward facing car seats because uh, right about the time when I was driving that car, uh, my wife and I were expecting our first child so I was trying to fit the car seat in and uh, I realised that the front seat had to be pushed quite far in front um, and I think in this Mark 8 Golf, that shouldn't be too much of a problem anymore but of course that also depends on the size of your car seat you know, if you're going to buy those massive capsules where like you know, they got a lot of space then naturally you're going to need a bit more space but I think overall, in terms of practicality this will work very well for day-to-day -day use and you know I think this car is perfect if you've got a setup where you have like two parents like two adults and, a, and an infant because in such a case when you're traveling the, 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 the second parent who's not driving is not going to be seated at the front anyway you're going to be seated at the back with the baby so the passenger seat can actually be pushed in front uh, it wouldn't really matter um, to accommodate the uh, child seat and then of course one parent will be at the back um, so yeah, and of course if you've got two uh, uh, booster seat going uh, or, or like two kids that, that are about 4-5 years old where you know they are in both booster seat seats already they're not in full-fledged car seats then this car will work perfectly well you know you don't really have to go anything bigger than this um, so of course it's a luxury to, to of course have a full-size sedan but um, if you want something compact, fuel efficient, um, nice to drive like, like, like the Golf and you don't want anything bigger than this then I would say that this car actually works pretty well you also have rear air conditioning vents which is nice um, let me see you have a individually zoned climate control here so you can adjust the temperature from the back it's not just an air vent uh, so that's pretty nice and I think uh, well, I mean, it's not the only car in this class that has rear aircon vents now, but it is also not a given that a car in this segment would have these rear aircon vents. Um, the other thing I would like to point out is that most compact cars, when you're seated at the back, you tend to have this sensation where you feel like you're very elevated, uh, but not with this car. In this car, if you kind of sit back, you know, relax a little bit, and you look out the front, the whole car feels actually quite large and quite spacious. A lot of headroom as well if you look at it. You, know, you can't really see but there's about this much headroom. 10 cm. 10 cm of headroom for me. Uh, and I'm 175 meters tall so you can, feel, you, you can figure out if that works for you as well. Um, yeah but, but this, this whole car feels like a very uh, comfortable car to sit in from the rear. Uh, and it doesn't feel like you are weirdly propped up 
It doesn't feel claustrophobic as well, which is nice because in some compact cars, you tend to have this feeling. I'm glad that Volkswagen has stuck with a lighter coloured roof lining rather than a dark one. Of course, a dark one would have made the colour a bit more edgy, a bit more young, uh, but it, 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 it definitely would have made the car feel a bit more claustrophobic. So, um, I think in terms of uh, people who are concerned whether or not a modern day hatchback has the ability to carry four people or to carry kids or to be practical as a family car the short answer is that in the Golf Plus Life Plus the answer is yes you do have enough practicality to get about your day alright um, and with that let's get to driving the car alright guys so now we are up on the roads in the Volkswagen Golf Life Plus I think one of the first things that comes to mind when you get behind the wheel of this car is just how complete the whole package feels. Um, I think generally the impression that people get from hatchbacks is that they are they are they are small cars, right? And because they're small cars, they tend to be uncomfortable and they tend to to, to feel pretty lightweight. And after all, KDA cars are kind of meant to be A to B cars, very functional cars. But you know, when you get behind the wheel of a Golf, you will understand why. Okay. The, entire car just feels like a much larger car to drive and I mean this in the best way possible there is this continental weight to the car that's very nice and very assuring up on the roads and uh, the entire chassis feels extremely composed whether you're in town or up on the highways and honestly once you're driving at speed and you don't look behind you right you, have, you actually really have no idea um, that you are in a hatchback which I think is pretty cool because you get the small footprint of a hatchback uh, but you enjoy the right quality of a larger car uh, of course there are situations where you do feel like the car uh, or where you do realize it's a hatchback and one of those situations where you go over a hump um, but this problem isn't necessary or, or you know I wouldn't really call it a problem either uh, this, 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 this feeling you get when you go over a hump and then the, the, the rear end jumps a little bit harder um, this is not unique to the Golf, it is actually apparent in all hatchbacks. It's just the way the weight distribution is because you, you, like, you don't have an overhanging tail, right? Uh, so, that, that, that's probably the only time when you feel like it's very apparent you're in a hatchback. And uh, if that's something that you don't really like to have in a car, then um, I would say that something like the uh, Skoda Octavia, which is also a Cat A car, all built with the same architecture and the same family but that might be something you might be keen to look at and we're actually going to review that car very soon as well in a couple of weeks so um, I'm when that review is up I am going to leave the link up here for you to take a look at uh, and you can then see how it feels uh, but like I like I pointed out in the start of the review as well this isn't the first time you're driving these cars in. and um, it's, it's kind of nice to drive these cars in Singapore uh, in our usual environment because the last time I drove these cars we were gunning these down Malaysian heroes and uh, really giving them a run for their money and uh, or, or putting them through their paces right um, and under those conditions it was just it was just spectacular because considering that these was kind of tuned down Cat A cars um, that you know technically only have a maximum of 100 dinner, right? but mine 129 horsepower but these cars performed wonderfully and there was so much power on tap or, and, and, and when I say so much, like, I don't mean you know, performance car le 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 levels of power but there was, there was a very very respectable amount of power on tap more than we needed and um, it was such an absolute joy to drive If you're interested to see what we what we got up to during the Desaro drive, during the overseas drive, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the link up in the video here as well, and you can take a look at that. Um, but yeah, those cars at higher speeds, this Golf included, performed very 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 well, and uh, we were just all so wonderfully surprised by by how composed the cars were even under such harsh driving conditions and actually you know we, we are pretty used to we are pretty used to driving higher power cars under those circumstances but 
but you know and and and, in, and initially i think there was a little bit of worry there was a little bit of worry about whether or not these can a cars would be able to stand up to the kind of conditions but no sweat absolute breeze and back here in singapore i think what i've kind of noticed as well is that uh around town the car feels like an easier car to drive than the previous versions actually uh, not that the previous generations were difficult to drive by any means but uh, this car just feel like it's more well-rounded to more diverse driving conditions I think the previous cars were probably a little bit more driver oriented um, which made them nicer driver cars I guess but this current generation with the Cat A spec and with the Mile Hybrid just feels like a more breezy car to drive uh, around town and I think it would cater well to a wider group of people uh, including people who are who may not necessarily be, be particularly uh, uh, obsessed about cars and uh, concerned about car handling uh, which makes it all the more special because then when a person who is actually concerned about driving dynamics takes over the wheel of the car. This car doesn't disappoint either, uh, which is really, really nice. So, in a situation or in a country where, where you know, most families have just one car, you know, this could be a car that kind of fits, you know, the entire family, uh, which is with, like, which I think is a very useful trait to have, because then nobody really needs to compromise their driving experience or their preferred driving experience for another person so you know for example if one member of the family likes a, a driver's oriented car they have it here you know this car is agile it's punchy it works well it handles speed it's composed um, at the same time if you're somebody who's less interested in all that you know doesn't want to deal with like steering weights how the car feels through the corners, it just want something easy, if you were efficient to drive, then this can be it as well. So I think in that regard, this is definitely still one of the most value for money cars that you can buy in the market today. riding on 18 inch tyres um, and they feel actually quite comfortable so there's really no need to compromise on uh, on aesthetics in that sense because uh, a lot of people say you know hey you know you want a better ride quality you go 17 inches but no not in golf you can do it all on 18 inches but yes I think to sum it up I think to sum it all up you know I think the Golf is a wonderfully made car and I think it is one of those cars that offers you a lot of engagement and a lot of driving dynamics but now it's available in a Cat A friendly COE format which is really the best of both worlds right if you think about it because we save on, save on COE, save on upfront cost but you still get quite a lot of the enjoyment associated with driving a cabby car. And if you 
are looking for a Cat A car and you actually care about the driving dynamics of your car, I would say that this is a real, real contender and something that you should really consider. And in fact, I can't really even think of many other cars that could offer this amount of driving dynamics in a Cat A package because many, many, many of the Cat A cars out there today are, like I said, very basic point A to point B cars. Of course, they all look like they're sporty, but they're actually not. Which is funny because the Golf actually doesn't look very sporty. <laughs> in fact, some people say that it looks a bit plain, but that's the beauty of it, right? Um, so this most most Cat A cars look very sporty but unsporty. This car looks quite mild, but you'll be able to run all sorts of circles around with it. So I think that's pretty cool. Alright, so as usual, if you have enjoyed this car review and you want to see more car reviews like that, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, and of course, the more support we have from you guys, the nicer the cars we can get, uh, the more opportunities we can get to join various press drives around and to bring you more exclusive car content. And if you've already done so, if you already like the video and subscribe to the channel, please uh, please uh, take care of yourself, you know, as usual. Um, stay safe and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.